After calculating our percentage table and comparing it across our independent variable and seeing that there is something of a difference, we'd like to test for the statistical significance of that difference. To do that, we're going to calculate a chi-squared statistic. Again, I'm showing the table with our observed values in each cell. And the first thing we're going to do is calculate what are called expected values. That is, if there's no relationship between these two measures, how many raw cases would we expect to find within each cell? It's the same thing as saying, is, if chance is operating, what should the distribution of these cases be jointly? So to do this, we need to concentrate on the row and column marginals and the table total. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to start writing out some of these values. So I'm going to list this as my expected value for cell 1, 1. And that's going to be equal to my column marginal, 1,403, multiplied by my row marginal, 550, and all of that divided by the table total, 1,488. And that gives me an expected number of cases of 518.6. So we observe 508 individuals who are employed who think that there should be increased government spending for unemployment benefits. If chance is operating, if these two variables are independent, we would expect to find nearly 519. This isn't a terribly large difference. Let's move on to our next cell and calculate the expected value for 2 comma 1. That is, this is row 2 column 1. So these are the employed respondents who believe that government spending should remain the same. Again, I'm going to use my column marginal, 1,403. And I'll multiply that by my row marginal for this row, which is 730. And divide that by my table total, which is 1,488. And get an expected frequency or an expected value of 688.3. So again, we observe 699 individuals in this cell. If these two measures are independent, we should observe approximately 688. And I can work through my entire table and calculate the remainder of these expected values. I'm going to go ahead and do that and just get this done and jump ahead so we can move to the next step. Okay, there we go. I've gone and filled in the rest of those formulas and calculated all of the remaining expected values. What we need to do now is organize these into a table so we can calculate our chi-square statistic. But first I want to take a minute to make certain you understand the subscripting I've used. Notice that I go from E11, E21, E31. So I'm going from row 1 to row 2 to row 3 while holding the column 1 constant. And then I switch to E12, E22, E32. That is, I've moved to column 3 and I'm holding that constant and again moving through the rows. Each time, for each cell, looking to the edges of the table, multiplying the two marginals I find there, and then dividing them by the table total. Make certain you understand where these expected values come from. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a table that will be useful for calculating our chi-squared statistic. What I'm going to do is make a column for our, my observed values and a column for my expected values. And then we're going to go ahead and calculate a column the next step where our chi-square values. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of pick this table apart and go right down my first column and put all these values in here. And then move to my second column. And then my expected values that I just calculated go here. I'm going to go ahead and delete some things here. We're going to move on and I'll show you how to calculate the chi-squared statistic. Now that I've created a little space here, we need to go to our chi-square formula, and it turns out that it's a relatively simple formula. 
I'm going to take my observed value minus my expected value and square that and I'm going to divide all of that by my expected value and I need to do this for all of the cell values so for six different values so let me just fill in begin this and then uh, again I will complete the whole table for you we're gonna have our chi-square statistic for cell 1 comma 1 which is gonna be equal to 508 minus 518.6 so hopefully now you can see that this table down below makes it a little bit easier to calculate these square this value and divide by 518.6 and we get an expected value around the two decimal places of 0.22 my chi-square statistic for cell 2 comma 1 is going to be 699 minus 688.3 the quantity squared divided by my expected value 688.3 and I get a chi-square value of 0.17 again I will do this for all the cells Okay, we've jumped ahead. I've completed all the calculations and again I'm asking you to go ahead and take a look at this and make certain you know where all the numbers come from. Our chi-square statistic for each cell has to be calculated and to get here we had to calculate the expected value. The chi-square statistic for each cell is simply the difference between the observed and the expected squared divided by the expected. So now I'm going to come back to my table over here, which is just helps me organize the numbers and write in all of my expected values. Sorry, all of my chi-square values. And if I take all of those values and I add them up, I get my chi-square statistic for the entire table, which in this case is 6.69. Now remember, a large chi-square value makes it so it's more likely we're going to reject the null hypothesis of independence and conclude that these two variables are related to each other. Now that we've calculated our chi-square for this table, we have to compare it to something. So we're able to determine whether we believe chance is operating, that is these two measures are independent of each other, or whether a variable is operating, in this case our independent variable, whether one's employed or unemployed, and how that affects attitudes about government spending on um, unemployment benefits. I've created a little more space here. The first step is we need to determine our degrees of freedom. And that's determined by how big our table is, and it's given as the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one which in our case is equal to three minus one times two minus one or two then I need to go to my chi-square table which I'll show you in just a minute and look up my chi-square critical value in this case I'm going to use an alpha value equal to 0 0.05 and it turns out that my chi-square critical value from the table lookup is going to be 5.991. With that information, we're now in a position to conclude our test of significance. We've observed two variables. We've noted that there's a difference in the percentages of people who think that they should spend more on government spending, the same and less on government spending. Now we can look at our test of significance. Our null hypothesis is that these two variables are independent of each other, and the alternative hypothesis is that they're not independent of each other, that they're somehow related or correlated. We've gone ahead and compared our percentages, and we can see that unemployed people are more favorable about increased government spending on unemployment benefits than employed people. 
but is this relationship statistically significant? To answer that question, we calculated a table chi-square and got a value of 6.69. I established a chi-square critical of 5.991 based on two degrees of freedom with alpha 0.05. Since our chi-square exceeds our chi-square critical, that is chi-square calculated is greater than chi-square critical, I reject the null hypothesis and conclude that this relationship is statistically significant and exceeds what we would expect due to chance.